Hey y'all, let's take a look at uh, factoring the greatest common factor. Now let's review first. What we did last time is we did the distributive property and then we did, um, uh, we kind of looked at several, like a, a, an expression, and we picked out the greatest common factor of both terms or all three terms in the expression. We just kind of you know, named what it was. Uh, we're gonna do more than that this time. We're gonna expand a little bit on that today. So let's first off go backwards here. You know how to use the distributive property, right? Let's just do the first one. So three times eight plus two is 10. We know the answer to this is gonna be 30, So because three times 10 is 30. But three times eight is 24, done. Three times positive two is six, and of course, 24 plus six is 30, all right? Same thing here. We know two a times x is two a x, done. We know two a times c is two a c, okay? So what we're gonna do next is go backwards from the distributive property. And I'll just re remind you here, factoring the greatest common factor is like reversing the distributive property. In other words, there's a distributive property. We're taking the 2a, for example, and we're going, you know, we're multiplying all the way through. What we're doing now is we're gonna see a term, they're gonna give you things like this. And then you're gonna go, okay, what's the GCF? I'm going to not only name it, I'm gonna factor it out of there, and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna pull it out and then say in parentheses what's left after I pull it out of each term and stick a plus or a minus, or whatever is between those. And I'll show you an example of this, okay? <clears throat> well, let's look at 24 plus 16. And we can look at this and go, uh, just as a, you know, a number, uh, it works with numbers, so it works with everything else, X's and Y's and all that jazz. So what's the biggest thing you can pull out of 24 plus 16? And of course the answer is eight, right? So what you would do is you would go, okay, I'm gonna pull out an eight, all right? Now I'm gonna put parentheses and I'm gonna go, okay, well first, when I pull it out of 24, in other words, 24 divided by eight is three, okay? Then I have a positive 16 divided by eight, well, that's gonna be two. Of course, we know the answer to this is 40, right? So we can go eight times three plus two is five, eight times five is also 40, and that is what we mean by factoring the GCF. That's all you're doing. There is no answer. We're not gonna solve for X. We're just practicing, so in the future when we do this and we want to solve for x, you can do it, you don't have to worry about it, you know how to do it, all right? Let's take another one. This is actually the one we just did a minute ago. So instead of giving you a number and then saying distribute this, they're gonna say factor the GCF, and go ahead and pause and copy if you need to. All right, so you're gonna look at both of these terms and go, okay, well, what's the biggest number first that goes into both, and of course the answer is two, right? And you're gonna go, okay, well, what term, or excuse me, what, uh, 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 not constants, what uh, variables are in both of those? And of course, the answer in both of this is an A, right? A is in both. So our greatest common factor is 2A. Now, we're not gonna just leave it there. We're gonna actually factor this out and say, you know, when we factor that out of each one of those terms, what's left? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go, this is a division problem. You're gonna go 2AX, divided by 2a. Now you don't have to do it this way, but if you want to visualize it, you can. Once you divide 2ax by 2a, of course those cancel out and you're just left with x, right? Because 2a times x gives you 2ax, all right? So we're done with this. Then you're gonna go, okay, 2ac divided by 2a, and I'm sure you probably see this, 2ac divided by 2a is just going to be c, okay? So what you've done is you've gone from this binomial to you know factoring that out and having a greatest common factor and then a set of parentheses. Now, I, you know, this is the same thing as that. There's no, there's no saying that one's better than the other. This is just kind of a practice drill for you to be able to do this. Okay, uh, let's factor this GCF. Pause and copy if you need to, <coughs> excuse me. Well, obviously five is the greatest common factor of all three of those, all right? So let's pull out the five. And there are three of them, but who cares? We just do it one more time, all right? 15 divided by five would be three. 35 divided by five would be seven. 60 divided by five would be 12. And there's your answer. Now, there's really no advantage to having something like this. You know, usually when you have just numbers, you can only know the answer. You don't go to the, you know, the lumber store and go, hey, how many, uh, you know, two by fours do I need? Well, I need five times, uh, in parentheses, three plus seven plus 12 or whatever. You know, you might get a two by four off the side of your head before they call the police, but anyway. Just an exercise to show you that it works. Okay, well, if it works for three of those, then it works for three of these. Pause and copy. All right, and don't forget, again, we are factoring this out. We're not just gonna leave it. Now, you, this looks complicated, but really, remember, what all these are are just subtraction and multiplication problems and division. That, that's really it, okay? Well, let's look at every single one of these and go, 
Let's take a look at the a's first. I got a cubed, a squared, and then a to the fourth. Well, you know, the one that will go into all of them is going to be a to the second, right? Okay. So that, that'll go into all three. In other words, you're going to choose the lowest exponent value of every single one of those variables individually. Okay, I got x squared, x, and x to the third. I have to choose the lowest one, x. Because you can't choose x to the third because, oh, I'm going to factor out x to the third. It goes into x. It doesn't go into x. All right, m squared, m cubed, m squared is going to be m squared. And we're going to go, okay. Now, we have three things. That's a minus, so... And then, there we go, okay. So we're gonna say, you know, each one of these is gonna be uh, divided individually. You divide this by that, then this by that, then this by that. You put them one, two, and three, just like they are. All these are division problems. And you can, I mean, by saying division, what I mean in this case is subtraction, right? In other words, you know what a to the third divided by a to the second is, right? Three minus two is just one, so a to the first. X squared divided by x, well, x to the second divided by x to the one is just x, right? m squared divided by m squared, don't put zero. I mean, it's just one, right? Anything divided by itself is just one. So we're done with that. How about the second one? I got a squared divided by a squared, one. There's no need to write one times one, just leave it. x divided by x, just one. m cubed divided by m squared is just m to the first, right? Done. All right, the last one, a to the fourth divided by a squared, four minus two is two, so that's a squared. x cubed divided by x to the first is x squared. m squared divided by m squared is just one. There's no need to write times one, because it's just gonna be the same thing. So that's it. And of course, you wanna write a little bit more neatly if you want to, you can go like this. And you don't have to do it like I do. Just do one, one at a time and just do it so it looks a little bit neater. But you would write this on the outside, of course. A squared, X, and then M squared. And this is your answer. That's it. And again, this is the same thing as this. In other words, in previous chapters, we would, they would have said, oh, distribute this here, here, and here. And you got it. You get this as your answer. We're just going backwards now. And the way you go backwards is to figure out What's the biggest thing that goes into all the A's? Oh, it has to be the one that's the smallest exponent value. And every single time it's going to be the same case. Let's do another one. All right? So go ahead and pause and copy. Why does that look so familiar? Because it's the same thing. Never mind. Forget that one. All right. Pause and copy this one. <clears throat> okay. We'll look at the numbers first. Obviously, the biggest number that goes into 4 and 2 is 2. So we'll go with 2. All right? The largest term that goes into A cubed and A squared will be the smaller one b to the fourth b just gonna be the smaller one z to the third z to the fourth be the smaller one z to the third okay so that is what we're pulling out in other words we're dividing it by this both of those terms so if you need to you can write this and just put it over 2a squared b z to the third if you need to or you can just do it individually one by one four divided by two is two a to the third divided by a to the second is a to the first these are just subtraction problems that's all they are and, and, you know, just operations, the four operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. B to the fourth divided by B to the first is B to the third. Z to the third divided by Z to the third is just one. You don't need to write times one. That's it. Okay, done. Two divided by two, one. No need to write that. A squared divided by A squared, one. No need to write that either. It's silly to go, oh, one times one. To, you don't need to do that at all. Just leave it. B divided by B, one. See how ridiculous that looks? One times one. To the list. I'm going to keep count of this. No. Okay. Uh, z to the fourth divided by z to the third is just z to the first, right? You can just write, write z if you want. And that's it. That is your answer factored right there. So I need to do it. Okay. All right. Go ahead and pause and copy. Go ahead and do this yourself. See what you get. Pull out the greatest common factor and then see what you have left and then unpause it when you're done. Okay. Well, you know, you've got a three there and you've got a one there, really. So you can't pull out a three. Don't try to pull out a three because you can't do it. So the greatest thing you can pull out is really just a one. Well, there's no point in writing, I can pull out a one here. You know, just write nothing there. But let's look at m to the third and m squared. Well, you know, the larger one is m, I mean, excuse me, the smaller one is m squared. So that's all you can do on that one. X and then there is no X. So you can't say, oh, I'm just an X then. No, there is no X there. So there's nothing you can write there. So let's focus on y squared and y to the first. Well, it's just going to be y to the first, right? There we go. Okay, and don't forget, you are dividing this by that now. 
So 3 divided by a 1 is a 3. m cubed divided by m squared is m. x divided by, there's nothing there, just write the x again. y squared divided by y to the first is 2 minus 1, or just y, done. All right, there's my plus. Okay, m squared y um, divided by m squared y. Anything divided by itself? Don't put a 0, put a 1. And there you go. And the way, by the way, if you ever wondered, oh, did I get this right? I'm not sure. Just go ahead and go through and distribute that through here and there and see if you got the same thing you started off with. If you did it correctly, it means you did it. I mean, if you distribute and you get the same thing, you got it correctly. Okay. The second part of this lesson, uh, let's take a look at these two things. You don't need to write this down, but look on the, look on the left side there. Um, what's the simplest way to take care of that fraction? is to cancel, thus the name cancel. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you're gonna go, oh look, I can cancel the fours. I can oops, cancel the fives, cancel the twos. There's a seven, I cancel the seven. Oh, there's a three, the answer is three eighths. Okay, got it, okay. Now what about this one? How, what can we do here? I got two words for you, nothing. You can't do anything. And because the answer to this is eight plus five is 13 divided by eight, which is one and five eighths, right? That's the real answer we know. But you can't say, oh, look, I can cancel my eights now. The answer is five. Well, five, that's not the same thing as 13 divided by eight. That's crazy. So when there's a plus or a minus, you cannot separate those and, and cancel. But if there's a multiplication, then yeah, you can cancel that. That's the rule. And of course, if it works for actual numbers, it also works for variables, okay? In other words, one, really quickly, if this is um, 121 over 7, oops, there's my email, uh, 3 over 121, you can go, oh, look, I can cancel that. But if somebody says to you 121 plus 4 over 121, y you can't cancel the 121. That's, this is all part of one thing. I mean, you're, that's all. You can't do anything with that. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this. And you can, you can pause and copy. <clears throat> 4 times 37 over 4. Can you cancel those fours? Yes, you can. They're being multiplied, right? The answer is 37. You can actually do the arithmetic if you want to. It's 148 divided by four, and if you did that, you would get 37. Well, that is the answer. So it's being multiplied, and you can cancel, all right? How about this one? Is the four being multiplied by the a minus three? Yes, it is. So you can cancel, and the answer is a minus three. So, all right? How about this one? Can you cancel three times 61 over 61? Yes, I heard that. I heard that. I, saw, I see that hand. Yes, okay, that's right. Yeah, you can cancel the 61s. The answer is three. Good, okay. All right, how about this one? Can you cancel that? Who said no? I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Okay, even though this doesn't have parentheses in it, I mean, it's, you know, that's, it's a hunk right there. You're multiplying three by this hunk of stuff right there. Well, the same hunk of stuff is down there. You can just, that's gone. So that's like saying three times eight over eight. Well, yeah, you can cancel the eights. That's the same as that. They cancel out, boom, the answer is three. Okay, all right, let's try this one. Go pause and copy. This is where you want to make sure you understand what's going on. Okay, now, quick, first, don't, remember, you can't cancel the threes. Oh, look, there's a three up there and down there. Why can't you cancel the threes on the top and the bottom like here? Because they're not, not being multiplied, right? So you can't just go, oh, look, cancel the threes. No, can't do that. But look at the numerator, 3p plus 3. Can you do anything with that? Can we factor that? Okay, the answer is yes, we can. We can go, well, the three goes into both of those things. I'll just factor it out and see. Okay, so if I factor out a 3, that's going to be a p left. And then that'll be, you see, plus 3 divided by 3, that's going to be a 1 right there. And let me copy down the denominator again. And there you go. Is there anything I can, oh, look, g. Hold up, hold on, hold on. Look at there. You can cancel those 3s, right, because they're being multiplied. Gone. And your answer is just simply p plus 1. That's all there is to that. All right, here's another one. Pause and copy. Okay, don't get fooled. You cannot cancel out these three x's. It's tempting to go, oh, I want to cancel that. You can't do it because that's a subtraction right there. Cannot do it if it's subtraction or addition. 
This is like one hunk, if it is. They're bound together. But you can look at 3x and negative 9x squared and go, well, I can factor something out of there. Let's see. What goes into 3 and 9? 3. What goes into x to the first and x to the second? Just x does. Okay? What's left? All right? 3x divided by 3x is 1. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. And x squared divided by x is just x, all right? And I'll copy down the new, uh, excuse me, the denominator again. Now look, now what can we do? This 3x is being multiplied by that hunk in the parentheses. Since it's being multiplied, you can go gone. Those are gone, and you have 1 minus 3x, that's your answer. Although you could not do it like this because that's being subtracted right there. Once we pull it out, it's being multiplied, so yep, you can work on that way. Okay, pause and copy this one. Okay, well, what can we factor out of 5x and negative 25x to the second? Well, what goes into 5 and negative 25? Well, 5 does. All right, well, what goes into x and x squared? x does. Remember, you're taking the smaller exponent value. Okay, once we say, okay, 5x, Divided by 5x is just 1, and we don't put 0. All right, and negative 25 divided by uh, 5 is negative 5. Okay, and then x squared divided by x is just x. And then I'll copy down here the 5, the x, and the y. Now, you might look at this and go, oh, I can't factor anything now because that's a 5x, and that's a 5, an x, and a y. Think about this. If you had a fraction... Let's say you had 3 times, I don't know, 13 times 27. And down here, you had uh, 3 times 13 times, I don't know, uh, 65 or whatever. You could, go like, you could go like this. You could say, wait a minute, I can cancel this and I can cancel that. And 65, and I can't do anything with that, but I can just call it this. Well, that's exactly what you can do here. You can get rid of those fives. You can get rid of the x's. You can't get rid of the y, but I don't know, who cares? That's just what we left with, right? We don't care what it is. We're just going to do it right. And there, that's the final answer. That's all you can do with that one, as far down as you can go. Okay. All right. Try your practice set. There are a, a through D. Go ahead and pause it and try A and see what you get. Go ahead and factor that out. Okay. A is the greatest common factor is 5AZ to the fifth power. Once you divide uh, the terms... By that, you're going to get 3, a, z to the third, and then minus 7 will be your last one. Okay. All right. All right. Pause it and try B. Okay. B, once you factor out the GCF, which is 2, and then a squared, then b squared, and that's, you know, that's the most you can factor out of all three of those. If you factor out the first term, that's the same thing. So anything divided by itself is just going to be 1. All right. Second term... Only thing that's left is just an a to the first power. Third term, the only thing that's left is an a, b to the fourth power. Okay. All right, pause it and try c. All right, c is just, well, you're just left with one minus x because you're, when you factor it out, the numerator and denominator, you just cancel them out, and that's all you're left with is just one minus x. All right, try d, see what you get. Okay, d, same kind of thing, one minus 7x is all you're left with when you factor out uh, the numerator and the denominator. And you, you factor at the top, you get, oh, the same thing for the numerator and denominator. goes away, you're left with just 1 minus 7x. Okay. All right. Hope that went well. You guys take it easy, and we'll see you next time.